Hey guys, it's Laura. Today I'm going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. I absolutely love watching these tag videos. They're one of my favorite videos to watch and now I'm going to do it myself. So there are 15 questions. I will link the original creators of this tag down below if I can find them. And let's go ahead and get started. We're starting right off with the big question, which is best book that you've read so far this year. This was really hard. Um, as of filming this video, I think I've read 75 books so far and I've given out like 35 five stars. So I read a lot of good books this year. The one that stuck out the most to me so far is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. So this book follows Brie, who is an aspiring rapper. After a very successful rap battle, she does get the opportunity to record a song that ends up going viral, but for all the wrong reasons. This was absolutely phenomenal. The story, the characters, everything about this just connected with me in a way that nothing else ever has. And it was the same with The Hate You Give, but I actually think I enjoyed this one a little bit more. Angie Thomas is absolutely brilliant at creating well-rounded, complex characters, as well as just nailing dialogue. This touched on so many important topics as well that really meant a lot to me. And also, I really appreciated all the Black Panther references because Wakanda forever. I loved this. This <laughs> meant so much to me and it's definitely the best book that I've read so far this year. The next question is best sequel you've read so far this year and that definitely goes to The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. This was absolutely phenomenal. I think that this might be my favorite book in the series just because of some really amazing scenes that I absolutely loved. Also, this book kind of hit me the hardest. Besides the actual ending of this first series, this book really pulled at my heart <laughs> and I definitely love it for that. These characters, Vin and Ellen and Sazed and Kelsier and just everyone in here, I absolutely loved so much. I absolutely love this series and I am so glad that I picked it up this year. The next question is a new release that you haven't read yet but want to and for me that's definitely Middle Game by Shauna McGuire. I absolutely love Shauna McGuire's writing and the synopsis of this is just so intriguing. This is apparently about a set of twins, Roger and Dodger, who were created and then and we have this man who created them in the hopes of through them attaining godhood. It sounds really good, really dark. The cover is amazing. I'm really excited to read this. I just haven't picked it up yet. I don't know why. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year, hands down, The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I cannot wait to have this book in my hands, okay? I already have it pre-ordered. I have a countdown on my phone for the release date, okay? That's how excited I am. Erin Morgenstern wrote The Night Circus, and The Night Circus is my favorite book of all time. I have very high expectations and very high hopes for The Starless Sea, and I really hope that they're met. I need to like calm down. I need to calm down before the book gets here because I don't want to be disappointed, but my expectations are super high. Question number five is biggest disappointment this year so far. So for me, that is Caraval by Stephanie Garber. So I seek out books that have to do with circuses and carnivals and that's like, that's my thing, you know? Um, the circus is my favorite thing and I want to love every book that I read that involves a circus. This was so promising for that reason and because of the hype, surrounding it. I, I was just expecting so much more. This, it wasn't a bad book by any means. I ended up giving this a three stars, but I felt that it could have been so much better. And I was just, I was just so upset that it wasn't everything that I hoped for. The main character was annoying. The plot was predictable. The writing wasn't the best in my opinion. So this was... <laughs> terribly disappointing for me. Next we have the biggest surprise and that goes to The Wicked King by Holly Black. So 
I read The Cruel Prince and I just thought it was okay. I gave it a three stars. I didn't understand the hype, but the ending really intrigued me. And so I wanted to go ahead and continue with the series. So I picked up The Wicked King and this book blew me away. I was completely surprised by how much I enjoyed this. I was audibly gasping and like yelling at this book by the end of it. It was so good. I was so surprised. With the way I felt about The Cruel Prince, I did not expect for this to be as amazing as it was. I do recommend the series and I cannot wait for Queen of Nothing to come out. So the next question is favorite new author and that can be debut or new to you. So I'm going to go with a new to me author and this shouldn't be a surprise really, but it's Brandon Sanderson. Um, the series was amazing. It's this epic fantasy that is truly epic and I can't think of another fantasy series that I've read that tops this and I can't wait to get more but I do have a second answer for this and that is Josh Mallerman. So I started off reading Josh Mallerman this year with Unburied Carol and this is one of my favorite books of the year. It was so dark and so creepy and just so thrilling and all of his books have that same tone. I've read um, Bird Box and Black Mad Wheel also so far by him. Really love them. So Josh Mallerman is definitely another one that completely blew me away this year. The next question is newest fictional crush and unfortunately I don't really get fictional crushes that often. I think mostly because I read a lot of YA and I'm 30 so um, I don't really have the opportunity to crush on a lot of characters but the closest I can say that I came to having a bookish crush this year was definitely Zoya from King of Scars. So we meet Zoya originally in the Grisha trilogy, but of course we don't really get to know her as well as we do in this book. And she is completely badass and beautiful and smart. And I kind of fell for her a little bit. So Zoya is my answer for this question. The next question is newest favorite character. And, and I was gonna go with a character or a couple characters from the Mistborn trilogy, but I've started reading this book. This is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson, and this is, I think that this might be my new favorite book, <laughs> like of the year so far. I haven't finished it yet, so I can't say that officially. I'm 100 pages from the end, but I am loving this, and there's a character in here named Silas who is a demon that can turn into a big white fluffy cat and he's funny and scary and I love him. So Silas is my new favorite character and I cannot wait to finish this book because I really do think that it's going to knock on the come up out of the top spot for this year. Okay, now we're gonna talk about a book that made me cry. I am a very emotional person, okay? I cry like that, I cried for everything. And there's not many books this year that I haven't cried at the end of or during reading, but I'm gonna go with the most recent and kind of the one that made me cry the most, maybe. Um, that is Circus Mirandus, and this is by Cassie Beasley. This is a middle grade story that centers around a circus, Circus Mirandus, and a little boy who is dealing with losing his grandfather. His grandfather told him stories of Circus Mirandus when he went, and that's always been something very special between them. His, his name is Micah, the little boy, and his parents died in an accident when he was very young. So he's been raised by his grandfather, and now his grandfather is sick because he's dying. Micah goes through a lot in this book to try to deal with that grief of losing his grandfather. And it was done so incredibly well. This is an amazing story filled with wonder and magic and the circus and grief and it was beautiful and I cried like a baby <laughs> while reading this. It was so intense and so heartfelt. I highly recommend this book if you haven't read it yet, Circus Mirandus. It's it's absolutely beautiful. Next onto a book that made me happy. And for that, I'm gonna go with Once in Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. This 
is a um, gender bent Arthur, King Arthur retelling, but set in space in the future. It's amazing. Um, this was just hilarious, okay? I was giggling out loud while reading this book. I had a smile on my face the entire time, and it was just so much fun. This is the kind of book that doesn't take itself too seriously at all. It's just there for a good time, just to make you feel good, just to have fun while reading, and it was really, really good. I highly recommend it. I know a lot of people didn't like this because you kind of have to suspend your disbelief, but if you can do that, definitely give it a try because it made me so happy. I laughed so much and I just loved this world and these characters and it was great. Okay, favorite book to film adaptation I've seen. I have not seen any so far this year, which is unfortunate. I really need to get better about keeping up with movies. Um, I really wanted to see The Sun is Also a Star movie, which was based on the book by Nicola Yoon. Um, so hopefully I will be watching that soon. But yeah, I don't really have an answer for this one, unfortunately. Okay, most beautiful book that you've bought or received so far this year. I couldn't just pick one because <laughs> I've picked up a lot of beautiful books this year. So first I'm going to show you The Raven's Tale. This is by Cat Winters and this cover is stunning. I love this. I love the wings coming from her hair and the red font on a black and gray background. I think it's just absolutely stunning. Plus the under the dust jacket is really beautiful as well. Um, and then I have Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. This is the Owl Crate exclusive cover and I think Owl Crate just outdid themselves with this cover. I think that this is the best exclusive cover that they have ever put in a box and it's just gorgeous. I love black, white, and red together and it's just stunning. And then I think that this might actually be my favorite, but again, Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This is again the Owl Crate exclusive edition. It's purple instead of the usual green and I just think it's absolutely stunning. So there you go. Some of the most beautiful books that I've really ever seen. The last question is what books do you need to read by the end of the year and really everything. <laughs> I really want to get my physical TBR down. I have about 150 unread books on my shelf and it's kind of starting to stress me out. <laughs> Just a little bit. But at the top of that list, I really want to finish off the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Mass. I love binge reading series and I kind of put this on hold a lot this year. And so I definitely want to pick it back up. I need to pick it up with Air of Fire. I really enjoyed the first two books. I gave them four stars and I'm really excited to continue them. I also need to catch up on my Owl Crate books. I have been subscribed to Owl Crate for like two years now, almost two years, and I have maybe six or more now, six to eight Owl Crate books that I haven't read yet. So I really want to prioritize, prioritize those as well before the end of the year. And that is it. That is the mid-year book freakout tag. I really hope you enjoyed. I absolutely love watching these videos. They're so much fun. It's really great to reflect on what you've read so far in the year and what your reading year has kind of been like. So talk to me down in the comments. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I've mentioned or if you would like to read any of the books that I mentioned. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you would like to see more and I will see you in my next video. Bye!